to wrap up our session, we are um, going to talk a little bit more about, we talked quite a bit about CAR T and uh, some immunotherapy, but there's a lot of novel option. There's over 2,000 new drugs in the pipeline of lymphoma, so we have a lot of work in front of us. Please enroll into clinical <laughs> refer patient for clinical trial. I think this is really important. But uh, we talked about individual conjugates, so one of them is approved is brentuximab, obviously, in uh, CD30 positive, uh, but there's also, in obviously, in um, T cell and Hodgkin. And um, in large cell lymphoma, they're trying to take advantage of the combination in a frontline setting in combination with our CHOP. Greg, you want to mention? What do you think about the combination of brentuximab, VV CHOP? So, so initial results of uh, BB-CHOP actually looked quite intriguing uh, in patients with CD30 positive uh, DLBCL, and um, I, I think that this was a though not controlled study; it's just a phase two study. Uh, so we'll have to see if the, those results are maintained in the additional studies done in this setting. Uh, but it's a it's a very um, novel way of, of approaching it. Kami, you want to talk about uh, tafasimab um, and as a single agent, but also in combination, the, the MIND trial? Yeah, the um, L-MIND trial. So tafacitimab, tafacitimab is a um, FC-enhanced CD19 antibody um, that it was uh, evaluated in a phase one trial in all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And interestingly, there were a few complete uh, responses, complete remissions in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which you don't typically see with antibody therapy alone. Um, so based on that, the ELMINE trial was designed, and this was a phase two single arm study looking at the MOR-208 tafacitimab CD19 antibody in combination with lenalidomide. The combination was given for one year, and lenalidomide was given at a dose of 25 milligrams daily. And then for patients who completed 12 months of therapy, they were allowed to continue on the antibody if they had um, stable disease or better. Uh, and the results were actually very promising. The overall response rate in this, um, these 80 patients was 60% with a 42% complete remission rate, um, a median duration of response of 22 months. Um, so I think the combination was very well tolerated. Um, uh, 70, about 50% of patients had to have dose reductions in the lenalidomide, but 70% of them maintained at a dose of 20 milligrams or higher. Um, what we saw from the toxicity was primarily that what, what you see with lenalidomide alone. And once the lenalidomide was stopped at 12 months, the toxicity significantly dropped when the antibody was just given alone. Um, responses were similar across all cohorts. There was a little bit better overall responses in patients um, with lower IPI, um, one, only one prior therapy. This was done in a transplant ineligible population. Um, and in the non uh, um, GC as compared to the GC subtype, but the GC subtype still had a 50% overall response rate. The Elmine trial is, um, was impressive in uh, response rate and dur durability. Do you think that this is something that might interfere in response to um, CAR-T, anti-CD19, and further therapy? Yeah, so I think that that's a great question when you're, tar you know, have the same target with CAR-T and it's been so beneficial and then you're looking at a CD19 antibody. We don't have great data and I think we'll need to have more. There will be an abstract, a ASH, a preclinical abstract um, that shows that the CAR-T is still effective in uh, cells that have been treated with uh, tafacitimab. There is um, a few patients who were treated on trial that went on to get CAR-T and have done well with the CAR-T, but certainly using it either before or even after the CAR-T, I think is something that we'll have to, it, you know, have more patients treated with to understand that. And if you can remind our audience, in the Elman trial, there's patients were rituximab refractory? About half the patients were rituximab refractory. The, patient, the activity was still impressive in patients with rituximab correct. refractory. Yep, yep. I mean, it's and not the, the same target, but just to yes. make sure patients are still in benefit. Yes. And the, the monoclonal antibody, I mean, the 19, it's monoclonal. So this is, yep. uh, there's not, other than infusion reactions, we haven't seen a lot of adverse events with the drug as a sure. In fact, the, the adverse event rate looks very similar to what you see with something like R squared in the same population. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do, I think that, I mean, uh, CAR T cells are still a spicy meatball. I mean, there are some patients <laughs> that I would not be too comfortable, especially patients with some type of organ dysfunction, that, that that would be, I think, a very nice population that you would still want to consider something like this for. True. Some of these patients have very durable response to this combination. Yeah. Only R-square, we had some 
we have a patient at least over three years, and then it relapsed large lymphoma, so she had the double expressor, yeah. and then she has done very well. Wow. I think, you know, we're all at centers that can do CAR-T, so I think we have a little bit of a bias towards that, but sure. I think if you look at the general, mm -hmm. you know, U.S. population, right, you have to be able to get to a referral center, you have to, you know, be able to travel back mm -hmm. and forth, you have to probably spend time in the major city. The, the reality, you know, insurance approval, all that, is it's not that easy for everybody sure. to have access currently to that. And this regimen would be something that, you know, would be easy access for any patient with relapsed large cell lymphoma. Yeah. So in any uh, phase two study, you always worry about uh, patient selection and you know, are those results really uh, reproducible and can be compared with other uh, populations. Uh, so here actually the investigators conducted also a study when they look at the single agent lenalidomide and uh, they took a real world data on over 400 patients and they matched it on the patient level uh, to the characteristics of patients on a clinical trial in very tight match. And, uh, I haven't seen the actual results of the study, but uh, from the press release, we know that this match was actually quite successful. And indeed, in the same population of patients, lenalidomide just did what we typically would expect uh, with response rate approaching 30% and the relatively short duration of response. And indeed, uh, this uh, doublet appears to be doubling uh, response and uh, significantly prolonged duration of response. So. Mm -hmm.